hope you are doing well today our topic is visual force page and i will show i'll be showing these topics how to create a visual force page and some basics also take some inputs and send them to the apex class and do some validations so let's jump in um, for for the demonstration i have taken the bs code and i will be deploying the codes from the bs code so First of all, I need to create a visual force space. So create visual force and I'll name it just BF. Okay. So this is the, our basic structure of the BF page. And first of all, I will remove this. Okay, I'm gonna remove this, also this, and I will say uh, I will just give a title as Hassan Studies YT. Okay. And uh, I will uh, add some tags on the apex page first of all apply body tag equals to false it, this tag actually overrides the uh, by default body and html tag in the visual force space so i'll be putting it as false and in order to use the slds i have to put latining install shift equals to true and in order to use the apex inputs and apex command button we have to use the html5 okay and now I will be writing apex SLDS. Yeah. Also, in order to use the apex SL sorry uh, SLDS Lightning Design System, we have to use this tag first. Okay. After that, I will be using apex form. Inside the apex form, I have to click write another style class which is SLDS scope. Okay. By so now. We are ready to use the SLDS Lightning Design System. First of all, we have to write Lightning Style Sheets equals to true, then the Apex SLDS, then the Style Class equals to SLDS Scope. Now, within this scope, all the within this, within this, within this scope, all the uh, all the tags or components we can use the SLDS. Okay, I will just format the code a bit. Okay, formatted it. Now I will be taking two inputs. Input one equals to as a apex input. You know, you know to use the apex input, we have to always write the apex form. Also, I need HTML five. Okay, so apex input. I just close it earlier, so I don't forget it later. And style class. Oh, Styles. I will say SLDS input. It just I'm just uh, putting some styles in the input. M around small. This means the mar margin around the input will be small. And obviously the type equals to equals to text. Okay. Now I'm gonna copy and paste it. Copy paste. Input one. Input two. Okay. Now I'm gonna deploy it and see how our page looks like i'm gonna refresh it you can go quick find visual force page from setup and open the visual force pages pages you can see all the pages in here and click on your desired page which i just created is visual force okay and click on the preview okay uh, you can see hassan studies yt input one input two okay now I, I'll be creating a button. In order to create button, I need to write apex command button. Okay, command button. I will be giving a value. Value will be showing as label in the button as submit. Submit. Okay. I'll format the document. Format document and deploy it. Deploy. Deploy successfully. Now if I refresh it you'll be able to see that there's a button in here here's a button submit button so visual force creation and basics is done now i will be showing how to take inputs from bfps by button and send them in the apex class okay for that first of all i need to create a apex class i'll be going to classes create apex class bf controller okay the spelling is i did mistake in the spelling it's fine and i'll be getting two variables okay two sorry two get set public string input one 
I am not uh, use I am not actually following the convention so uh, do not actually think um, my writing is proper so uh, do not mind my writing step get set ok public string input to ok it is uh, get set ok I declare to getter and setter method without with two uh, variables input one and input two now i want to get this input values in our apex in order to do that i need to bind i need to bind this i need to bind this to my visual for space how i can bind it first of all i need to copy it input one okay input one and i need to write another tag value equals to value equals to exclamatory input one Okay, same thing for the input 2. Input 2. Okay, this one. Input 2. And I have to set the controller. I have to set the controller in here. So my uh, visual for space recognize my Apex class controller. I have set it. So now I'm going to deploy it once more. And I'm going to deploy 2. If there's no error it successfully linked yes it successfully linked with my apex class okay what i did i will uh, say once more i declare to getter and setter one is input one and another one is input two okay and whenever i uh, now i want to link them with my bf test so i need to uh, copy and paste this input one in here as this apex input value that means whatever I put in input, this input, this input one, the the value will be set in this variable. This variable means this variable, okay? And another one is input two. So whatever I set it, this apex input, input two will uh, contain that value. This will be set as dynamically, okay? This will be setting as dynamically now i uh, now actually i want to make sure that my values are uh, successfully setting up in the apex in these variables from uh, my visual for space how how i can do that first of all i need to create another class public void not doing anything uh, submit I just give a random name but i will put it in the lower case and uh, i will just system debug okay i will system debug the input one okay system debug input two input two now you're gonna deploy so I have a method name submit but it's not called from anywhere I didn't call it from anywhere so I actually need to call it I actually need to call it from command button whenever I click on the submit button that method will be called in order to do so this is the command button i have to say action exclamatory submit okay now i deploy it it will be successfully deployed i act at least i hope so let's see staying time oh no there's i actually missed it my bad and now i will try to deploy once more yes it's successfully deployed so I will review what I did till now. I took two input, input one and input two. I put value as input one and input two. And this input, this apex input value, whatever you give from the front end here, whatever you give from this value will be set to this one. And from where this one is coming, this one is coming from our apex class. Okay, and I, we on the, click by clicking the submit button we are setting sending these values to the apex class apex class submit method okay and we are system viewing it to make it sure that actually our values are passing to the submit method or you can say the apex class okay now i i, I just gonna go to sorry i just gonna go here this is the field one okay and this is the field two <laughs> uh, actually i added before so if i submit it 
if I submit it, you should be able to see from the debug, from the debug blocks. Okay, submit. Sorry, I actually need to refresh it first. Okay, submit. Okay, it's no errors. Okay, now if I go our developer console, double click on our latest log file and click on the debug only. Here, it, here this is. This is the field one. This is the field two. That means yeah, we have successfully actually input the value in the visual code space and we have shown them in the apex class by sorry by system debugging so our first three work is done so lastly i will show how to do do some basic validation okay just uh, normal validation uh, uh, actually it may come very handy to you we won't be using any javascript or jquery for the validation we will be using the apex directly so first of all I will go to the BFPs and suppose I will show an error in here. Deep. Okay. And there is an error. And in the div class, in the div I'll put put a class. So style. style as error msg okay by putting this you can see a red symbol and the uh, text will be red okay okay i will be just refreshing it there is an error you can see there is an error but i uh, actually need to write a style class If I refresh it, uh, it's actually not working. DB star class. Okay, let me see what I did wrong. Error MSG. Ah, actually, it was a class. Okay. Error MSG. I will try one more. Yeah, now it's working. Okay, sorry for wasting your time. Actually, I made some mistake. Uh, so, what this class do? This class actually put a symbol. Okay, this put a symbol in front and uh, makes the color as red. That means uh, there's an error. Something like that. It will be it will be visible for the user. So you actually don't need to write this class. You you just can uh, you just can directly use this class. Just you need to memorize the na name error message. Okay. So what I'll be doing, uh, I need to validate something. For example, if the user give uh, one two three one one two three four five six. Okay. If the user gives this number the error message will be shown okay that means if the user doesn't get this number the error message won't be shown for that what i need to do first of all i will be going to my apex uh, class i'll be taking a string variable okay the string uh, error number okay the error number is this one okay and i will be taking another another two get set another two get set this one this one this is the CSS and this is the error message okay and I'll be setting them CSS as now error message as now okay what I'm actually doing I declare two get a setter and another is string and uh, resetting the getter setter okay and i will be using this getter setter css in here in the uh, class okay this one I, I i i want to actually dynamically change the cl class right now this class will be empty so this red and this red sign won't be shown okay and uh, i want to show the error message in here what i need to do i need to 
copy it and paste it in here exclamatory okay done so uh, first of all i will and now i will give a condition in here if okay if the input one value is equals to error number okay the error number then the css css will be error msg as i shown you before an error message will be oh omg you have made an error okay now i gonna deploy it and i gonna deploy it too oh, oh there's and to put a exclamatory i hope all is good now if i go if i submit there shouldn't be an error submit this no error if i now submit one to three four five okay uh, i missed the six i guess see oh my god you have made an error if i put, uh, cancel the six see the error is gone so actually what is what i'm doing i declare here to get a setter this this css this one this one actually holds the error message value the css value okay initially i set it to actually initially there's no value i actually for uh, uh, for resetting i set the value to null for both error messages and css so this css is actually the class whenever the class is whenever we find uh, the uh, condition sorry whenever the condition is true we set the class value to error messages that means our uh, that means our red error and red text will be shown this red sign and red text will be shown and the, for messages i use this variable error messages okay this get a setter inside the pf page you can see the error messages i am also setting it dynamically from here okay so this is how you can actually do validation this is actually very useful I, and i guess that's all from today from my side and Hope you guys enjoyed my lecture and sorry for being confusing sometimes also if you have some confusions or any questions you can just uh, write them on the comment section I will reply it, uh, whenever I get time. Thank you guys.